Wisdom is the right application of knowledge. I lift all government leaders before you. I lift businessmen. I lift the scientists. I lift all the frontliners before you. I ask that you give them wisdom to come out with solutions that can help defeat the coronavirus. I pray that you give them the wisdom to help them to tackle the virus and at the same time build up the, the economies of nations of the world. allowing this uncertain season to control us, let us allow Jesus to make a bigger impact in our lives. Let us remember that there is power in the name of Jesus, so speak His name over each and every situation that you are facing. We also encourage you to chat with us and let us know if there is anything you need prayers for, and we will be more than happy to do that for you. So before we start service, let's all prepare our hearts and pray. With eyes closed and heads bowed down and surrender. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come together in the name of Jesus. Together we are separated physically, but our spirits and hearts are joined together by your love, your grace, and mercy. We pray for your healing hand to be seen in every corner of the earth as we look towards you to carry us through this season. We pray that you go before us and we will learn to be still and know that you are God. Open our hearts and minds as we hear your word this morning. We pray for supernatural breakthroughs. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So why don't you stand up as we begin worship this morning? Mm -hmm. Shame is up. 
Hi, this is Tony Mariura and today I want to share a message I've titled Never Too Late. If you have a good Bible, let's open to the book of John chapter 11 verse 32 to 44. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came without weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus said, Again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb, it was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Lose him and let him go. This story gives an insight into the life of of all believers going through crises or trials right at this moment. All those who have gone ahead of us who experienced pain and crisis in the past. There's no way in the Bible that tells me that the day you gave your life to Jesus Christ, your life is just going to be smooth. Narrow is the way that leads to God's kingdom. The path is full of thorns. The path is full of many obstacles. but your passion for God and your purpose must keep you going. It is not the smoothest of roads, but it's the surest route to God's kingdom. It is a, a road that you take and you know that at the end of the day, when you stand before God, He's going to tell you, well done, good and faithful servant. Trials are part of the Christian faith. Trials do not break us. They actually make us. Trials help us to experience the goodness of God. Challenges should not take you away from God's presence. Because if you're a believer, you are bound to experience some of these things. Mary and Martha were ardent supporters of Jesus. They loved Jesus. They supported the ministry of Jesus. They gave. They were true worshippers and they had a brother named Lazarus and when Lazarus was sick they felt the normal thing to do was to send for Jesus who had a supernatural power to heal Lazarus and so they sent for Jesus but Jesus did not show up as of the time they wanted him to be there you know there's something about our walk with God that if you don't understand the, the character of God, you may think that he does not care for you. God is not obliged to do what we want him to do for us the time we want him to do these things for us because he's God. He has a power of sovereignty. God is always going to give to us what we need to fulfill our destinies, not what we want. He's infinitely wise. Sometimes when we pray, 
our prayers do not align with his purpose for our lives. And so sometimes we we experience things that we think may be denial to our prayers or delay. But God is committed. And when God speaks, he honors his word. He's a God of integrity that when he speaks things, he brings them to pass. So they sent for Jesus and Jesus didn't show up. As of the time Jesus came, Lazarus was already dead. And Mary met Jesus and told Jesus, If you had been here, our brother wouldn't have died. You see, you can't do well in your Christian life if you have the attitude of the blame game thing. You can't blame God. God is perfect. God is wise. God is God. Sometimes we blame God for the things that we feel helpless about. That is a strategy that would lead to further pain. The Bible tells us that in all things, we should give God thanks. In all things. Do we give God thanks for bad things? No. But in the midst of bad things, we can give God thanks. Giving God thanks in the midst of crisis and calamity simply means you're bringing God to the battle and telling God that you are infinitely God. That my destiny lies in your hands. That I know that you can get me out of this mess. I know you can get me out of this sickness. I know you can get me out of this financial crisis. I know that you are God and nothing can separate us from your love because I know that I am the apple of God's eyes. You should always see your position in Christ. He loves you. If God could give his only begotten son as reflected in John 3.16, what do you think is going to withhold from you? As of the time Jesus showed up, Mary and Martha considered it too late. God is never too early for any project and he's never too late to deliver. He can do all things because through him all things were created. In him we live, in him we dwell, in him we have the totality of our being. With man this may be impossible but with God all things are possible. He is infinitely infinite. He started the start before the start got started and began the beginning before the beginning began. Is the definition of life. Is the author of life. Is the prince of peace. Is the definition of our existence, and he can do all things. And so, when Jesus went there, he told them, "Did I not tell you that if you would believe, you see God's glory?" There are certain things God permits in our lives, so that He alone can get the glory when the deliverance comes. There's a certain crisis in your life right now that God is using to set you up so that he can take the glory. I don't know what you're going through, but don't give up. God is never late. When they put Daniel in the lion's pit, they thought that was too late. God showed up the last minute. When they put the Hebrew boys in a fiery furnace they thought that was the end before they put them in that terrible fire they prayed but the last minute God showed up when the armies of Pharaoh threatened the people of Israel the last minute God showed up but Moses prophetically declared to them he said stand still and you will see the salvation of God. I don't know what you're going through, but I came this Lord's day to tell you that until you stand still, you will never see the salvation of God. You may have done many things, but having done all, stand and let God do the rest. Pray and worship Him and allow the mighty warrior, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, the Jehovah Nisi, the Jehovah Rapha, to come into your life 
and take you out of every mess. If you can believe, all things are possible. The Bible tells me that if you have faith, as small as a mustard seed, and you say to this mountain, be thou removed, the mountain's going to be removed. Do you have faith? God is on his throne. God wants to take you to new dimensions of faith. God wants to take you to new dimensions of power. The trial that God permits in the life of a believer is the one ordained to strengthen him and glorify the Lord. Do not allow the stench of today's pain to take you away from God's presence and deprive you of the glory of true worship. The Bible tells me in the book of Psalm 30 verse 5, For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I speak to people all over the world under the influence of the sound of my voice right now listening to this message that God is on your case. You may be going through terrible pain, terrible crisis, but I see light, God's light at the end of the tunnel. You may have gone through pain and crisis, for the past years, for the past months, for the past weeks, or probably the past days. But I came to announce that I see a new dawn, that God is coming to make your life beautiful. The Bible tells me in the book of Psalm 34, verse 19, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. I don't know how bad and how many your afflictions are. But one thing I'm certain about is this. God will never leave nor forsake you. He's going to deliver you from them all. We've seen this many times in the Bible. Where the last minute he showed up. The mighty warrior showed up. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever, is still on your case. Is going to deliver you. Just don't give up. Hold on to the faith that you have. When God allows crisis in our lives, there are things he wants us to learn. You should always look at the positive aspect of the negative things you're going through. The Bible tells me in the book of James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4, I brethren can it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. The reason God has allowed the crisis in your life is because he wants to perfect your faith. The reason you probably have a marital problem or probably have an economic problem or probably have a, a health problem is because God wants to perfect your faith. The light shines brighter in the midst of darkness. If you've not experienced darkness, how can you know the beauty of light? If you've not experienced pain, how can you understand the mystery of gain? If you've not experienced disappointment, how can you understand the joy of faithfulness? Whatever you're going through, there's something that God wants you to learn. No believer is immune from demonic attacks. Satan fights what he fears. God will not stop the devil from attacking you because he has empowered you to defeat the enemy. Satanic interruption provokes divine intervention. The Bible tells me in the book of Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. When you're going through crisis, where do you run to? During crisis, we run to God. We don't run from God because his name is a strong tower. He's our shield, is a defender, is the one that protects us from all the attacks of the devil. The Bible tells me in the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 18 to 19. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. What a promise. God never denied the existence of the devil. 
neither has he denied the existence of the devil's powers. But he has given us the power to defeat all the powers of the devil. The Bible tells me in the book of Psalm 102 verse 19 to 21, For he looked down from the height of his sanctuary, from heaven the Lord viewed the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to release those appointed to death. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When God looks at humanity, he looks at humanity with compassion the way a father would of his children. And one of the reasons he does that is to deliver those appointed from death. Death is not by accident because the Bible makes it clear that it is appointed unto men to die once and after that judgment. So that means when people die, they don't die by accident, they die through appointment. But the truth is, if there is an appointment that you do not like, you have the power to cancel it. For all those watching me, those appointed to die by demonic forces and demonic powers, I cancel these appointments in the mighty name of Jesus and I release you into a divine appointment of life appointment of peace, appointment of grace, appointment of mercy, appointment of supernatural favor and supernatural increase in Jesus' name. The true character of any man is revealed by adversity. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. A man who faints in the day of crisis is a person of little strength. Jesus has redeemed us from sickness, destruction, and sorrow, but it is up to us to enforce this spiritual freedom in words, thoughts, and actions. The Bible tells me in the book of Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 to 5, Surely he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. You've been healed right from the foundation of the world, which was made perfect by the sacrifice of Jesus at Calvary. So even if you have the symptoms of sickness in your body, you need to stand firm and keep confessing victory because God has called you to live in divine health. God has blessed you, spirit, soul, and body. God wants you to prosper in your spirit. He wants you to flourish in your mind and he also wants you to do well in your physical body. Sickness is not from God and so you must resist every symptom, everything, that's put you in a place of perpetual bondage. For everyone listening to my message today, I declare God's healing power upon you. I break the power of arthritis. I destroy the power of cancer. I destroy every form of disease resident in your body in the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Galatians 5.1 tells me, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Sickness carries a yoke of bondage. Poverty carries the yoke of bondage. And depression carries the yoke of bondage. And I declare by the Spirit of God that wherever you are, whatever yoke that has enslaved you today has been broken in the name of Jesus. God is never late in fulfilling His promises, but He operates from a supernatural time zone different from us. We cannot force him to bow to the urgency of our situation. Rather, we must submit to his will. What we sometimes call delay or denial of our prayer request is simply God operating from the realm of infinite wisdom, using time and space to execute his perfect plan for individuals and nations. Therefore, we must emulate ancient biblical heroes who used faith and patience to inherit divine promises. It is one thing for you to have faith, but faith is meaningless without patience. Faith tells you that God's going to do it. 
patience tells you wait for God to do it. Sometimes we pray and we ask God for certain things. But the truth is, are we patient enough? Do you know the mind of God? Can you comprehend his wisdom? Romans 11, 33 to 36 tells me, For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has become his counselor? Or who has first given to him, and it shall be repaid to him? For of him and through him and to him all things, to whom the glory forever. Amen. Job chapter 11 verse 7 tells me, Can you search out the deep things of God? Can you find out the limits of the Almighty? So if you cannot search out the deep things of God, you have no right to assume that you know why God has not answered your prayer or to assume that you know why God has done certain things. All you need to do is to wait. Our function is to proclaim and God's duty is to perform. Just keep proclaiming victory in every spectrum of life and over time you see God perform the prediction and counsel of his servants. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 tells me, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. I don't know what you're looking for, what you're asking God to do for you, but in his time he makes all things beautiful. When Jesus met the sisters, Mary and Martha, he told them, show me where you placed Lazarus. In other words, where did you stop believing God? Take me to the place you stopped believing. Because sometimes negative experiences can fashion or change our perception of God. But that shouldn't be. In other words, you cannot have the victory you're looking for if your mind is not conditioned to accept the victory. God is ever present, is, a, is our ever present help in times of need. But Mary said, if you have been here, God does not need to be in your presence for him to perform a miracle. We've seen that many times in the Bible where Jesus Christ did not physically go to people, but he spoke to certain people, he spoke the words, and they were healed. We cannot limit God. Sometimes when we don't get the things we want, or sometimes when tragedy strikes, we begin to question God. But for God to do things for you, he walks with your faith. In other words, you must believe. So in other words, he was telling them, he said, Take me to where you laid him. Take me to the place where your hope died. Take me to the place where you stopped believing. Take me to the place where your dream died. Take me to the place where your marriage failed. Take me to the place where your business failed. Take me to that place where you lost your health. Take me to the place where you were so broken and I'll show you that I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe him, he can resurrect your business. He can resurrect your marriage. He can resurrect everything. Now, this has always been the, the human problem. But God, at this time, he stinks. It's been four days. No matter how much your life stinks, Jesus is ready to fix it. No matter how dirty your life may seem, Jesus is ready to fix it. Give him an opportunity to fix your life. You know, sometimes when we because of our past problems and our past pains and the shame that comes with it. We don't want to talk about the past. If you can't talk about the past, honestly, there's no way you can step into your future. 
your ability to talk about the past without feeling the pain and shame is what gives you the capacity to step into your future triumphantly. God wants you to take him to the place where everything has collapsed in your life so that he can fix your life again. For women who are sexually abused worldwide listening to this message, do not allow your sexual assaults to define you. Do not allow the shame and stench of all the things that has happened to you to define you. Do not allow the shame of being raped, being assaulted to define you. Jesus loves you. He wants to change your life. He wants to transform your life. He loves you. In his own time, he's going to make all things beautiful. When God delivers you from trouble, to maintain victory, you must never allow the pain and shame of adversity to define your existence. You must replace the garment of death with the spirit of praise by enforcing total freedom through a positive mental attitude. Only the power of praise can break the chains of captivity. And Jesus did something that was profound. He looked at Lazarus and he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, rise up. But before he called forth Lazarus, the Bible makes us understand that we have a high priest who is touched by our infirmity. Jesus knows how you feel. Jesus knows what you went through and what you're going through. And he's touched by the feelings of your infirmity. He knows. He knows about your fear. He knows about your struggle. He knows about your pain. He knows about your disappointment. And he's here to help you. Just let him. And he demonstrated something. Although he was God, he wept. But if you read further, it didn't allow his tears to define him. It is okay sometimes to cry, but don't allow grief to define you. Make it very sure. And he looked at Lazarus and for a moment time stood still. He looked at the rotting body of Lazarus and it spoke as the master of the universe he spoke as the god of all flesh he spoke as the wisdom of god he spoke as the word when god speaks death cannot defy him when god speaks sickness bows when god speaks poverty bows when god speaks every plague bows he spoke. His words carry the authority and power of God. Lazarus that was dead, that same moment, the power of rottenness stopped. His blood began to flow. His eyes popped open. His heartbeat was restored. His cells, his tissues, everything was restored. Because God spoke. I don't know what the devil has done to your body. I don't know how sickness has ravished your body. But today I stand in agreement with the word of God and I declare that every disease in your body right now, I command you to bow to the name of Jesus and I declare you healed. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, I declare God's healing power upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. And he called forth Lazarus, and Lazarus, who was bound, came out of the grave. The Bible tells me in the book of John chapter 8, verse 36, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Therefore, if Jesus makes you free, remain free. But there's something that I also want to point out. 
God has the power to heal you. God has the power to set your spirit free. But we have the obligation to set our minds free. Because if God sets you free and your mind is not free, your body can never respond to that freedom. It is God's obligation to free our spirits. But we have the power to renew our minds. You can't be transformed without renewing your mind. That's why the Bible tells us, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How can you get that done? How can you change your mindset? You can find this in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. I know that the devil has been telling you things, how worthless, how useless you are. But you need to cast out those imaginations and subject them to the obedience of the word of God. Psalm 68 verse 6, God sets the solitary in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. When God sets you free, he expects you to praise him. Psalm 142 verse 7, bring my soul out of prison that I may praise your name. The righteous shall surround me, for you shall deal bountifully with me. God can do anything. He's never late. And when Lazarus was set free, the news traveled all over the place. And the name of Jesus Christ was glorified. The name of God was magnified. Whatever God allows in your life right now, ultimately, we bring glory to his name. Just allow him to do what he started in your life. He's never late. I believe that he's able to do exceedingly much more than we ask for. And ultimately, everything you, you're going through right now will work for your own good because you love God. Today, I want to join faith with you. And I speak to every troubled believer, everyone going through crisis, that from this moment, the power of captivity over your life is broken. I pray for the nations of the world. I pray for the peace of USA. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I pray for the peace of the Philippines. I pray for the peace of Nigeria. I pray for the peace and prosperity of Africa, Asia, North America, South America, Australia, Europe, Antarctica. May the peace of God that surpasses all things set these nations free and dwell richly in your hearts in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And for those of you watching me online, if you don't have a defined relationship with Jesus Christ, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I know you're the Son of God. You died to set me free. Today, I submit my life to you and I ask that you come into my life as my Lord and Savior. With my heart, I believe and with my mouth, I have confessed. Thank you for accepting me and cleansing me from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name, Amen. May God's peace be upon you and see you next Sunday online. God bless you.
Hello team friends and family. We hope today's message resonated in your heart and spirit. Today's online service, which is viewed from people all around the world, was made possible by some generous people from team. And we want to thank you for your faithful giving. Generosity is a privilege. We don't have to give. We get to give and be a part of the amazing work God is doing all around the world and in our lives. Through your support and giving, we are able to donate lunches to doctors and nurses 
who worked the front line at the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine. It is the COVID-19 Center for Testing, and to date, there are over 400 medical professionals who are exposed to the coronavirus in this facility. If you wanna support, there are ways to give online. You can give through PayPal, just scan the code on your screen and it will direct you straight to our giving page and through Gcash or Instapay. Again, we are so thankful to each and every one of you who are giving your time and finances. We couldn't do this without you. Every week, we have been getting a lot of prayer requests online. It is a blessing and an honor to be able to pray for you. We know that prayer always works. So if you are in need of prayer or just need someone to talk to about your current situation, we would be more than happy to intercede for you. Send us a message by scanning the code that you see on your screen and we can schedule a one-on-one -on -one prayer with you over the phone. We are here to support you and let you know that you are not alone during this pandemic. We love you and God bless you from Team USA. Hi team! If today's message sparked a fire in your heart and would like to surrender your life to Jesus and have a new life, pray this prayer with me out loud. Jesus, I am a sinner and in need of a savior. Please forgive me for all my sins. I declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Jesus, I receive this new life and accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and personal Savior. In Jesus' name, Amen. Congratulations! You just made the greatest decision of your life and now an heir of the Kingdom of Heaven. Let us help you on your next steps by visiting the code on your screen so we can pray for you and help you get started on your new faith journey. Team, we love you, we are praying for you, and thank you again for joining us today. From our house to your homes, see you again next Sunday. Have a great week and stay blessed.